Hello and uh, welcome to my third video on uh, reloading uh, the 310 Martini Cadet. Uh, in this video, this is the final one, I'm going to talk about uh, reloading components or reloading equipment more than components. Uh, I was originally going to put that in the second video but that got a bit long so, uh, so we're going to uh, put it in the third one here. Um, and uh, so basically equipment you need to reload the cases. We talked about cases, primers, projectiles, powder. So let's assume that you've got all those gathered together and you need to know what you need to reload. Uh, so, uh, so we'll go through the uh, equipment uh, one thing at a time and then we will uh, actually reload some cases and take them out to the range uh, and uh, with the cartridges we've, we've reloaded and we'll uh, shoot them off and see how we go. The first thing uh, that uh, you're going to need to find if you're going to reload your Martini Cadet is a set of dies. Now, as far as I can ascertain, there's only four manufacturers of uh, 310 dies. Um, and so I'll go through them one by one. Uh, it probably depends a bit whether you live in Australia or New Zealand or whether you live in North America or elsewhere as to what uh, is your best uh, option as far as getting dies from. Uh, but I'll talk about them, uh, pricing, and, uh, and, I'll, um, uh, and I'll give you details of uh, website addresses to be able to uh, source the dies. In, uh, in Australia here, uh, there is a company called Super Simplex. Um, and they've been around for years and they make uh, reloading dies and presses. And um, they don't have their own website or anything. It's a very, I think it's a bit of a small backyard sort of uh, concern. But, um, but they do make 310 Cadet uh, 7 8 inch dies sets. Uh, and I've been to a 310 Cadet shoots and spoken to other shooters and, who use the Super, Super Simplex dies and are quite happy with them. Um, now um, I've just done a done a bit of an internet search, uh, and they are are available through some of the gun shops uh, here in Australia. I don't know whether they have them in stock or whether they order them, uh, but they're 109 dollars uh, Australian listed. Uh, Rebel Gun Works in Brisbane has got them on their website at the moment. Uh, 109 Australian dollars, which is about 100 dollars US. Um, so that's one option. Now the other option here in Australia or in New Zealand is uh, lead dies. Now I've actually got a set of um, of Lee uh, 310 dies. There we go. So they've got 310 Cadet written on them. Uh, now if you're familiar with lead dies, you'll know that generally if you buy them in a in a thing like this, they actually have an insert with reloading data and everything on them. The 310 don't, uh, and um, if you look on the uh, Lee Precision website, there's no mention of 310 dies. Uh, however, uh, I, I just saw these in a gun shop in Brisbane uh, and I bought them. And, um, and I've just done an internet search just now and there's a couple of, couple of um, places uh, who've got them in stock here in Australia. Uh, they're normally about $95 apparently for a, for a three die set with a shell holder. Actually, my shell holder's not in here, but it does come with a shell holder. Um, uh, but at the moment, I don't know whether that will be the case by the time this video goes live, but um, Western Firearms uh, in, uh, in Australia, which is a mail order um, firearm accessory company, they've got them on special for $75. So, uh, and they do send, send internationally, so you could order them from overseas. Uh, when, I, when I put the video on YouTube, I'll check and just see whether, whether it's, they're still, um, still on special. Um, now, I'll come back to my lead dies in a minute because I, I, you know, I need to talk about them in general. Uh, the other option, uh, if you're in North America, um, CH4, uh, die, die reloading uh, manufacturer, uh, they've got them listed on their website. Uh, they have all these different classes which, um, which uh, varies the price but according to their website the 310 uh, die sets are uh, F they're F class dies uh, and they're $98.80 US 
So that sounds like, I think they're quite good quality, so that sounds like uh, probably not a bad option if you're in North America. Um, RCBS also have them as a special order die on their website. You can order them off the website. Um, they're I series dies on the website and they're $170.95. So, um, so they're the most expen expensive option, but of course we all know that RCBS products are really good. So, um, so that's the other option. So you've got those four different options. Um, if I was in Australia, I'd probably either be going with the, just getting some Lee dies or, or Super Simplex. Um, if you're in North America, by the time you bought some Lee dies, you know, even if you ordered from Australia, you quite possibly, if you if you're in North America and you rang Lee, even though they don't list them, they may actually sell you them because they obviously make them in batches to send to Australia and New Zealand. Um, I would presume because um, they're generally you go to the gun shops, they're generally on the shelves here. Right, so now I'll talk about uh, my Lee die. All right, so Lee dies, they look like any other, other Lee dies really. Three die set with a shell holder comes with it. Um, full length resizing die uh, has these little collet type, um, type uh, um, decapping rods. Um, so theoretically, if you know, if you have, um, if you have the one that's a bit tight, it will push the rod up rather than break the pin. Um, and, and I found that works very well. Had no problem with full length resizing. Um, you got a uh, one of these powder through expander dies, um, which also seems to work fine. However, when we come to our um, seating die, uh, it wasn't quite so straightforward. When I um, first started reloading for my 310, as I've mentioned before, I got a mould which throws um, projectiles about 0.321. Um, but when I went to um, seat uh, the, uh, the projectiles in the cases after I decapped them, um, full length suit, resized them, primed and expanded them, I found that the bullets, the projectiles, wouldn't actually go into the die uh, as it came uh, when I bought it. Um, now, what I did then was I actually uh, I took the expander, um, uh, the uh, the seating seating um, attachment out of the die, and uh, I just forced a one of my soft projectiles through the die and then measured it, and the uh, when it came out of the die, it measured 0.317. Um, so that's the internal diameter of the die as it came from the factory. Now, if you've watched the whole series of videos, you'll know that um, that you know we need to be shooting projectiles around the 320, 321 uh, inch diameter. So again, we come back to this same problem of healed bullets versus non-healed bullets and uh, and projectile size, and obviously when Lee have designed these dies, they've decided that people are going to be using 316 uh, projectiles um, and they've designed the die accordingly, um, which is a bit of a problem. But saying that, what I then did was I, I emailed Lee and I said to them, well look, you know, I bought your dies and, uh, and you know, the, the proper size projectiles don't go through them and they, uh, they emailed back and said if I said, if I said the die back, they'll um, with a project with one of my projectiles, uh, they'll fix it up for five dollars plus postage. So I thought, well, that's not a bad deal. So I, uh, I duly posted the die back to the US um, with a projectile, and uh, they opened it up and sent it back very quickly, and uh, they didn't charge me anything. They didn't even charge me the the, the um, return postage. So, um, so yeah. So they you know, they're obviously a good company to deal with. So. On the basis of that, I think uh, if you're in Australia, well, you know, by all means, just buy, pay seventy-five dollars to Western Firearms and buy a set, uh, and you can either do that, either send it back to Lee, or possibly, if you know someone that's got a lathe, um, you could probably just get it and just drill it out uh, to the correct diameter, get it done yourself, and uh, it would probably be a lot quicker. Um, if you're in North America, however, it may be worth actually 
talking to Lee first and saying you want a set of 310 dies but you need to uh, to be loading projectiles of you know up to 322 and they may actually um, actually do the die for you before you actually get it so save yourself getting it and then having to send it off again uh, the next piece of equipment we have to look at is something to be able to uh, prime your cases um, now uh, I've got a uh, RCBS rock tucker press uh, which has the priming attachment sort of integral in the press so if you've got the normal shell holder which comes with the dies you can actually prime cases um, using the press uh, it's a little bit tedious and time consuming I find doing that it's not so bad with you know um, uh, larger, larger calibre hunting rifles where you're not loading so many cartridges in, in a, a time but um, I find that uh, with something like the 310 where I fire quite a lot of cartridges at, you know, at once uh, it's nice to have a quicker uh, method of priming. Now I've always used uh, for all my uh, rifles and pistols these Lee um, Lee priming uh, tools. They're very good good value uh, and they work quite well. You can prime cases very quickly. Uh, if you're not familiar with them though they, uh, they you put your primers in here and they actually have a, a variety of, of little uh, little case holders that go into the tool uh, you buy them individually or you can buy a set they have a little case like this um, that they uh, you can either buy the case and buy them individually or you, you can buy a set and then it has a few different spaces if you're buying specialist ones you can put them in there now um, when I got my uh, my I first started doing the 310 I uh, I tried them all and um, I didn't get there's none that the cases would actually go into this original 310 cases. Now, if you've got them made from 3220, obviously you can just use the 3220 one, um, which is no, if you look on the back, there's a little there's a little table. Probably won't focus on that, I don't think. But there is a little table. So, uh, and I don't have my glasses on, of course. But um, uh, if I look at this 3220, there it is. So 3220 is number six, is a number six shell holder. So if you're making cases from 3220, it's not a problem, just get a number six shell holder. Um, however, I found that with my Super 310 cases, none of them would actually fit. If, they, if I get the rim in, the actual thickness of the slot that the rim goes in was too big, so the case was slopping around, or, or they were too small for the case to go in. So again, uh, I, uh, I contacted Lee, and uh, oh, actually, I think it says on the Lee site, uh, if you need a shell holder for a special calibre, just send them a case. Um, so I duly did that. I sent them a 310 case, and um, and they sent me back a uh, a shell holder which fit the case perfectly. And what it ended up being was a number 19, number 19 shell holder, which is actually the, the one that's correct for um, nine mm Luger. Um, and I already had the 19 shell holder and I thought well that's strange and so I went I tried the case in my other 19 number 19 and it didn't fit so I think what they've done is it just almost fits but not quite I think they've just got the 19 number 19 shell holder and just opened out the uh, just the corners just slightly in the slot to allow the case to go in so um, so if you don't want the hassle of, of getting a special shell holder from Lee, um, I think you probably could just get the number 19 shell holder and um, and then just get a tiny little needle file that's that's small enough, or even probably a uh, get a hacksaw blade even get a hacksaw blade and uh, and just grind the end of it so it's so it's it's uh, not too wide to fit into the slot. And then just carefully, uh, carefully just take the edges out until the uh, until your three three ten rim will actually um, slide in there. So there's a little trick for you um, uh, as far as uh, getting a, a Lee um, shell sure holder to go. Now I know there are, uh, there is, there is other um, other types of. Uh, um, Priming tools. I know the RS RCBS priming tool actually uses the actual uh, the normal case holder for the press. So um, 
So if you're going to buy a priming tool especially, well, you could even just do that and buy an ICBS one and then you can just use your, your, your um, case holder that comes with your die set uh, to prime the cases with your priming tool. Um, now the other thing that you may need is uh, equipment for trimming your cases. Um, now there is uh, a, a variety of, of little uh, trimming um, tools with collets that you can put the case in and trim the case down. Uh, I don't, I've never had an experience using those but I see them in books and, and um, uh, on the net and stuff. So, um, so if you've got one of those it's probably just a matter of getting the correct collet and working out how short you're going to trim your cases. Uh, and I have talked about case length before. Um, but yeah, the other option is uh, is uh, these little Lee. I tend to use Lee stuff because it's uh, it's readily available here in Australia, and or you can get it off their website reasonably cheaply. Um, now, I've, as I've said before, if you're making cases from um, from 3220 uh, brass, uh, I would uh, in the first instance get the 327 Federal Magnum. Um, one of these these little collets, uh, and which will trim your case to exactly 1.2 inches. Uh, and I know my rifle actually accepts a case of that length. I mean, some rifles may not, but that's probably a good start. But uh, funnily enough, even though Lee don't list um, 310 dies on their website, they do list uh, this 310 Cadet uh, gauge holder for the for the little trim trim tool. Um, and uh, uh, I, as I, said, I haven't even opened this one. I was buying something else from a shop here, from an online uh, shop in Australia, and I saw they, they had these on special. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just grab one in case I need to trim some cases. So, but I think these. I haven't actually even looked at this uh, to see exactly what length it trims it to. But it looks like it's probably only about 1.05 inches. Um, so they're fairly short. But um, uh, but yeah, if you've got a Super or Bertram Brass, um, those are available um, either in, in Australia here or off the, off the Lee website. Right, so that's all the uh, equipment basically we need. We've got a press dies, um, you've trimmed your cases to the correct length, and I'll talk about that more when I'm actually um, showing you how to um, um, reload the cartridges. Um, and uh, you've primed your brass, uh, well you should be all set to, uh, to start shooting your 310. Uh, I've just done another, um, have a little look on the, on the websites uh, and I've realised that uh, Lee are the only company that actually provide the shell holder with their dies. Um, CH4 uh, list uh, the shell holder, it's actually a special one for the 310, uh, $8.84 on the website. Uh, so you'd have to add that to the price of the dies, which is still reasonable value considering their dies aren't too expensive. Um, RCBS, uh, would, I, I wasn't able to find the special shell holder for the 310, but um, I'm sure they would have one if you bought dies from them, but that's probably going to cost you uh, 10 or $15 extra. Uh, and the Super Simplex don't come with shell holders either, so you'd have to actually buy the 310 shell holder when you order the dies. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're uh, deciding which type of dies to get. So I've uh, installed my uh, full length resizing die into the press. Um, I know a lot of you are probably uh, quite familiar with the reloading process and all this is pretty much the same but I thought I'd um, uh, just go through the whole process so if anyone's watching this video that's never done any reloading they at least know the general process. Right so I found my lube um, this is actually Hornady case lube I think the tube broke so I just got it in this jar so I just sparingly lubricate the uh, the case um, you should only have to do the outside I've never bothered doing the inside like I do with a proper bottleneck case and uh, it seems to be fine so we'll put that in there like that. I couldn't find the shell holder for my lead dies. I had to use the 3221, but uh, that should work all right. All right, so uh, there's the primer. It's just popped out of there. All right, so there's our case. 
uh, full length resized and decapped. <coughs> I just thought I'd show you here, uh, I made sure the uh, camera focused before I switched it on, but you can actually see there, um, there is a little neck in this case, there's a tiny little shoulder and a little neck, it's hardly even noticeable, but that's one of the characteristics of this case. So you can use any one of the, of the uh, primer pocket cleaning tools just to clean the ash out of the primer pocket. So that's nice and clean now. Okay, so um, using small rifle primers. So uh, I'm just doing one case here just for this demo so I haven't actually filled the thing up but I put one primer in the in there so just take that there we go make sure it's flush okay so that case is primed I've replaced the uh, falling three sizing die with this expander die. They, they call these powder through expanders because you're supposed to be able to put the case up in and then actually put your powder charge in the top there. Uh, that'd probably be alright if you're using a little scoop you know, that comes with the lead dies. but um, as I weigh my powder charges I've never actually bothered doing that. Uh, but anyway we'll run this into the expander die. So you just want to expand it just enough so it will accept the the uh, projectile. You don't want to work your brass too much because as we've already discussed it's a mission getting 310 brass so you want to make it last as long as possible and I must say I've had very few neck cracks in my brass alright so I've set up my uh, packed uh, powder scale and dispenser uh, that's what I use for weighing out um, charges for reloading the rifle uh, and I've got powder in the dispenser uh, this is what I'm using, this is Australian, Australian Defence Industries AP90 um, as I've mentioned previously uh, it's an obsolete powder unfortunately because it does seem to be the best powder for the 310 Cadet um, obsolete even here in Australia and I don't think it was probably ever available overseas but I've got this big tin of it and you only use, I'm only using 5.2 grains um, with each charge so uh, so one tin's lasting a very long time I've been using it for years so I've probably only used half of it I suppose uh, and when I, when I finished I'll probably either go to AP100 or I might even do some more experimentation with some other brands So what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll zero the scale first. So that says zero. Uh, now I've got to calibrate for this powder first, so I'll do that. So I'll just push the button, calibrate, and that will dump about 150 grains or so of powder slowly, just to set the computer to. Uh, to um, be calibrated for this powder. The scale and dispenser are now calibrated that powder. Now I use 5.2 grams of AP90 as a target load. That's just a um, fairly mild target load. So uh, we'll push 5.2 enter and dispense that. takes a little while this but I find that once I get going and I'm doing a whole heap uh, it can be doing this while I'm over at the uh, reloading press um, seeding the projectile so you can get quite a production line going alright there's 5.2 grains 
So uh, we'll get our case. I've got the case in my hand there. I don't know if you can see it, it's right inside this, the uh, funnel. Put that in there. Alright, so we've got powder in our case. Alright, we'll just get a projectile. So I just uh, mould my projectiles and uh, and tumble them in Lee liquid alox and I just keep them in plastic containers like this so um, you can, uh, when you're moulding the projectiles you can make hundreds of them at a time so I only ever do it every few years really um, but uh, there we've got uh, our healed projectile now this is where uh, there's two sort of separate ways of doing this um, if you're if your case, if you've trimmed all your cases so they're exactly the same length, of course you can uh, you can use your press. Just have your um, your seating uh, um, die set so that it will seat the bullet exactly to the uh, to the heel like that. Because obviously, if you haven't got things exact or your cases are all different lengths, some of them are going to be not going all the way down until they come up to the shoulder of the heel uh, and the biggest problem is those that are a little bit deep uh, the case is going to actually either either uh, damage the bullet at the heel or actually ride up over the heel and uh, possibly become hard to chamber. Now as I've mentioned before because I've got a whole heap of these super cases and they do tend to have all different lengths, the lengths vary by by 0.15 of an inch between the longest and the shortest. And the shortest are very short, so I didn't want to trim them all to the short, shortest length. They're only about uh, kind of one inch. Uh, I've tended to batch them. I've trimmed them a little bit, but I, I, I've never tried to get all my cases exactly the same length. Because um, I don't, you know, it doesn't seem to make that much difference. But if you've just bought a batch of, say, Bertram cases and they're all the same case, uh, it may be worth you. Uh, um, trimming them all to the same length as I mentioned. But what I do to avoid that problem is I just hand seat the bullet into the case. A little bit more. So that's actually seated down to the heel now. So um, now we'll uh, take it over to the press. There's the seating die, but because I'm not going to be using the uh, the actual seating plug in the die to seat my projectile, uh, I'm going to take out the actual um, plug itself uh, and just use the die body. Um, these dies will crimp, but you don't really need to crimp the 310 with its heeled bullet. All you want to do is just close the case up so that it pushes it in so it's snugly in, sitting in the shoulder of the uh, of the um, the heel of the bullet, uh, and it's up against that. So, yeah, bullet seated down, uh, hand seated till the till the rim of the case just touched the uh, shoulder uh, of the heel of the bullet. You can see the case. You may not be able to see. It's a bit hard to focus at this distance, but the the case is just still a little bit proud of the of the bullet projectile so all we're wanting to do is just close that up so I can feel there's very only very minimal tension on the handle of the press and you can see now it's it's uh, it's pushed that shoulder in so it's snugly sitting in behind the, the shoulder uh, and so that's virtually a smooth transition there and uh, so there we have a completed 310 round so when you first uh, relay for your 310 before you take it out to the range or the field I'd recommend you just check uh, that um, it'll chamber okay in your rifle so uh, there we go there's the round that we just loaded and you can see it's Push with minimal finger pressure. I won't close the uh, the block for safety reasons, but um, but you can see that that's uh, that's seated right down. It's it's flush with the extractor, um, and that block is going to close no problem.
and if I push that, extracting perfectly. So there we go. That's a perfect 310 cartridge. Here's the uh, group that I fired at uh, the range this morning at 50 metres. <clears throat> now you can see uh, there's a flyer over here. Uh, I was attempting to shoot a five shot group uh, but I did have the rifle uh, discharged before I was ready at one point and I called that as a flyer uh, so I actually fired an extra shot. And here we've got the five shot group here. Uh, now if we get the uh, the ruler and uh, measure that group, the furthest shots centre to centre, that's just about spot on three quarters of an inch. So that's a three quarter of an inch five shot group at 50 metres, which I think is about 55 yards. So that's with the original uh, military style open sights uh, of the Martini. So that's just about as good as you could hope for. Uh, it's fairly good shooting for any uh, any rifle, let alone a 100 plus year old open sided rifle. So uh, that's the potential that your cadet could have uh, if you reload for it correctly. <coughs> 